So we had the SID Display Week, and uh, who are you? I'm Chris King. I was the founder of Planar Systems, which at one time was the largest uh, American flat panel display manufacturer. Uh, we started the company in uh, 1983, and uh, really was the first display technology that could do really good laptop displays, really good monitors. Um, and so uh, it was natural for us to get involved with SID. We we're always a very uh, technically driven company. And SID is where all the technology is reported and you can meet uh, people and network with people and find out uh, what's going on in not only the United States, but in Europe and Asia. Uh, and over the years, it's been so great to, to meet so many people here. And now that I'm kind of semi-retired, it's nice to come back and uh, not only kind of try to keep up, even though I'm not actively involved, but I like to follow what's going on in technology, but also to meet friends that I've known for over 40 years now and uh, interface with them and find out news about their lives and what they're doing and what technology they're excited about. So uh, SID has just been a, a wonderful part of my life. And, uh, for many years. I, 40 years in it, yeah. 40 years. And, uh, you know, I still volunteer. I'm in the, uh, the their awards committee where we try to give out SID's equivalent of the Nobel Prize for people that have made fantastic contribution. I mean, when you look at what has happened in the last uh, 40 years uh, from displays that uh, were on watches that you could hardly see in the sunlight to now these huge, uh, beautiful, colorful TV displays that you see in the... Uh, Best Buy and Costco. I mean, it's. I don't know of any technology, even uh, Moore's Law in the, in the uh, IC world, that has made such leaps in its capabilities as, as, as uh, display technology has in the 40 years. So, if you're not involved in SID, you're really missing out on a very exciting technology development area. So, did you kind of invent the laptop displays? Well, we were in in the really what I consider the really first good laptop displays. You know the. It was the first, you know, before they they tried to put small SRT, uh, CRTs in, and and that wasn't really a laptop. It was impossible it, to do. It right? looked more like, a, you know, we came from Tektronix. We were spin off from Tektronix, and it looked more like an oscilloscope than a laptop. And we were it was able, like a thick thing they were trying to do. Well, it's kind of a rectangular box, you know, because the CRTs are this thick, so you can't make a flat panel. And really, until you had flat panels, you could do the, the kind of the folding with a keyboard in one fold and, and the display in the other fold. And, uh, How did you do that? Well, it turned out that this technology we developed, which was thin film EL, uh, had very fast response time, it had good viewing angle, and it was relatively uh, power efficient. At that time, LCDs, which now is the dominant technology, had very severe viewing angles, uh, response speed uh, times, and there were only uh, black and white, basically, more, more gray and dark gray. So it's not LCD? No, it's not LCD. It's a, it's a thin film, light emitting film. Uh, you just apply electrical energy to it. It's, it's like, I mean, what has happened is EL, which was inorganic when we started, has now evolved to organic. And so, like the beautiful televisions that uh, LG makes or the, the, the cell phones that Samsung makes are organic EL. So the technology is continued in the organic field, not so much in the inorganic field where we were. But it's, it's a wonderful because if you LCD, you have the, 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 the display itself is just a light valve. You have to have a light source, and you have to have color filters, and you have to have filters. With these electroluminous displays, they create their own light, so you don't need a black light. You don't need these filters. They're thinner, they're lighter, and right now they're more efficient than LCDs. So uh, let, let's just walk over here uh -huh. for a second. So um, it's not LCD, it's not OLED, it's... Uh, well, it's it, it's electroluminescent. Electro, by definition, electroluminescence is the application of converting electrical energy into light energy. So OLEDs are electroluminescence, but they're made out of organic materials. Thin film EL that we worked on are made out of inorganic materials. They're, they were, they're actually kind of an evolution from a, from a CRT in that the phosphors in a CRT are inorganic. And so we, but in a, in a CRT, you hit them with an electron beam to give off light. We just applied electrode, they're like a little capacitor. You apply electrode, electrical energy across the capacitor and it gives off light. 
and that's the way uh, uh, electroluminescence work. Conversion of electrical energy into light energy. And so what kind of laptop models were like the big famous ones back then when you well, started? Uh, digital uh, had laptops. Uh, we had uh, the first 19 inch monitors we did with DEC. Do you remember the digital equipment company? Yeah. Uh, Data General was another big one. Um, Hewitt Packard had a laptop. Wh the, which years the, are we talking about right now? The mid 80s. The mid 80s. Mid 80s, yeah. And uh, it was really became uh, the dominant technologies for in the 80s. And then the Asians really invested in uh, active matrix LCD, and that got to be very competitive. And so what EL became was a niche technology, mainly for medical, because medical, because it still had better performance than LCD, uh, better but, performance. It, but it cost more. Cost more. So yeah. you, you needed to find a market that would pay for quality, and medical was our, our sweet spot. And at one time we owned like 40% of the medical market for, for EL displays. For patient monitors, measures your heart rate, EKG, uh, these uh, equipments that, uh, you know, the apply electric, what do you call them? The apply uh, voltage sheet to start a hot, start a hop attack, heart attack. Uh, God, I'm losing my. Yeah, those machines that yeah. save people yeah. back from the. Yeah. And, but what, what does that have to do? Does it display on that? What do you say? Well, the thing was about EL, it, it was very, it was all solid state. An LCD is two pieces of glass with a liquid in between it. So if you press on them, or if it gets too cold, that liquid freezes and it doesn't work very much. EL being a solid state material is already frozen, basically. So it can be as cold as you want, it can be as hot as you want. Since it's just a thin film on a, on a substrate, if you press on it, it doesn't distort like LCDs do. And it's very rugged. The military was also another big application. We, we had most of the displays in the, in the armies for tanks and uh, portable field radials and things like that. Do you do full color? Well, that was our Achilles heel. We, we could do red and green, but we had a hard time with blue. We never really were able to get it as efficient blue as we wanted to. Why? Well, we just couldn't work out the material science on that part of it, unfortunately. Sometimes and, it's uh, like magic and it's hard to make it right, real, right? right? And blue's always hard. I mean, uh, oil AD people still have trouble. Blue's always the hardest color, it seems like, because it's the highest energy, and when you apply that high of energy to a material, it tends to break it apart, and so the lifetime isn't as good, so... And that was what has been the problem with OLEDs, although I think they made a lot of uh, progress on that now, and maybe it's not so much a problem. I'm not an expert on that anymore. So maybe they have blue. Yeah, I think... Maybe. The OLEDs, I think, have blue. Where the, what the lifetime is, I'm not sure. If you don't have blue, how do you do it? How do you... You can do... You, it. you need it. You need it. Well, the other way is you have white and you put a color filter in front of it. Now that's what LCD does. It has a white light behind the LCD, and the LCD is a color filter, uh, a color okay. shutter, and then you have a, a color filter that makes it red, green, and blue just by dyes, right, basically. And uh, so, if you had figured out the blue, you would have been bigger than LCD today. I don't know if we would have been bigger, but I think we've been pretty successful. But, uh, and so, is it kind of true to say that you were the American technology and the LCD was the Asian technology, or not quite? Well, but they, the investments you were know, over there. The original developments of both LCD and EL and plasma were done in the United States. Yeah. But the Asians really invested multi-billions of dollars yeah. in LCDs. It's and that's very important why, with the billions of dollars, and right? And so they the, became the, 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 the cost leader. Uh, and so it wasn't that they that, that they invented it, but they did, they perfected it and they made manufacturing uh, cost effective so that the masses could afford it. I mean, our displays were always more expensive than LCDs, and but so we needed a high value uh, application in order to justify that cost. Could it have been possible that if somebody had invested billions in your technology, then uh, it would have? It's possible. Been LCD? Yeah, it's, it's possible. I mean, like I said, we weren't real successful in developing blue. But maybe if we didn't have billions of dollars either, so who knows? Yeah. Because I guess LCD realized many, many things also by having those billions of dollars 
to kind of like push themselves up every time there's yeah. an issue they just find a way to fix it yeah it's amazing i mean like i said they had viewing angles they had color saturation problems they had response speed and they've managed to, to overcome all those things and now you know oids is challenging them but uh, with the addition of these quantum dots to the LCDs, they're, they're fighting back against the OLED. So I don't know who's going to win in the end. And uh, right here at the, at the SID Display Week, there's all these uh, kind of like friends, right? Um, uh, that are all in this, this business. Yeah, I mean, every, you know, this is a, a place where people can go and talk to each other and uh, exchange ideas. I mean, there's certainly trade secrets that you don't talk about but there's a lot of things you can talk about and you have both personal and technical connections that uh, you know I'm retired now but I still have these connections that I value very much through sin. Displays are so important for humanity right? This is our... Well, well if you look at our lifestyle now I mean if people didn't have their smartphone or their computer you know Maybe they're looking at displays a little bit too much. Maybe they could be, you know. But it's amazing. It's like it's so amazing. important. Yeah, I mean, again, we were in the medical field. I mean, we made these portable instruments that people could carry in the ambulance that, you know, before you need a whole room full of equipment to, to make those measurements. And it's just amazing what uh, flat panel displays have been able to, how it's been able to impact how humanity can, can bring information to the, to, to, the professions and to the, to the regular consumer. I mean, it's a fantastic revolution.